Some vegetarians might claim that fish are friends, not food, but I'm not one of them. But what if our fishy friends are actually poisoning us? Hey guys, Julia here for DNews. Thanks to recent trends like the Mediterranean diet, fishy meals are having their heyday. Fish seems to be the perfect healthy food since they're packed with omega-3s, which could be good for the heart, and some claim it's great brain food too. But there's always a problem in paradise. Eating too much fish might cause a buildup of mercury. Mercury builds up in the bodies of smaller fish, which get eaten by bigger fish, so the mercury starts building up there, and then that fish is eaten by an even bigger fish, then they get even more mercury, and so on and so forth up the food chain. This process is called bio accumulation. So mercury bioaccumulates in bigger fish like shark or swordfish, which wind up with pretty big doses of the toxin. But even more common fish like tuna and salmon can accumulate decent doses too. For most people, this isn't a problem. The benefits from fish far outweigh any negatives, but mercury exposure in pregnant women could harm the brain and nervous system of a developing fetus. Exposure might even be linked to ADHD issues in their children, according to one study published in the journal Archives of Pediatrics and Adolescent Medicine. And the FDA recommends that pregnant and breastfeeding women avoid eating shark, tilefish, swordfish, and king mackerel, fish with the highest levels of mercury. They also recommended limiting consumption of albacore tuna to six ounces a week. So where does all that mercury come from? It's a natural element found throughout the environment. Some scientists think that it could be coming from hydrothermal vents, but it's much more likely it's thanks to human activity. We produce a lot of heavy metal waste from power plants and manufacturing industries. While some safeguards are in place, some facilities have serious leaks or disposal issues. So heavy metals like mercury get released into the air and then find their way into our water systems and head out to sea. There, the toxin builds up in fish, which turn the mercury into a toxic form, methylmercury. According to the EPA, nearly all fish and shellfish contain traces of methylmercury. Other animals are affected too, like coral. Corals are really good at filtering out these heavy metals from the water. Unfortunately, this also causes them a lot of harm. Just small amounts can kill them, but their deaths may not be in vain. Corals have given inspiration to a group of Chinese scientists. These researchers described their new coral-inspired material in the Journal of Colloid and Interface Science. They made aluminum oxide nanoplates, which have proved themselves to be pretty good removals of pollutants in the past, but they're not ideal. So the researchers created their nanoplates to mimic coral structure and the way that they curl. By making a structure that's porous like coral, it increases the surface area of the material, making it absorb all that nastiness so much better. So that could be a cool biomimicry solution in the future. Well, that along with green energy and manufacturing solutions that keep the oceans from being polluted in the first place. But for now, the FDA recommends eating at least two meals a week, which include fish, just not any of the large species like swordfish. But what about farmed fish? Is that a good alternative or not? Trace explores that question in this video right here. Global fish farming, called aquaculture, passed global beef production. But have you noticed farmed salmon and wild salmon look a little different? The wild are orange-pink, and the farmed are a light pinkish. They're not quite orange. So are fish friends not food? Nope, they're totally delicious. Well, what do you think? Let us know down in the comments below. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons so you can keep watching DNews every day of the week.